Hi, and welcome to Auto Repair Cloud's video overview. Auto Repair Cloud is a web-based shop management system. It's multi-platform, so that means that it runs on multiple devices, namely a computer via a web browser, tablets, and smartphones on both iOS and Android. Another cool thing about Auto Repair Cloud is that there's also a suite of applications available to the repair shop's customers as well, the vehicle owners. The applications are available via a web browser and via tablets and smartphones, just like the apps for the shop owners and technicians. There's a few things that vehicle owners can do on their apps, such as manage their vehicles, create or add concerns with pictures or other multimedia files for technicians to view, as well as schedule appointments with the shop. But we'll get into that later. There's a lot of things that Auto Repair Cloud could do to make the operations of a typical repair shop run more smoothly and provide the fundamental features a shop needs to operate. The first thing we'll go over is how to add customers to the system. This is very simple and easy to do. We first navigate to the customer and vehicle button. Click on that. And now we see the list of our customers and their vehicles. If we click on the little carrot icon here, we'll see the history of past repairs for this customer. But let's go ahead and create a new customer. We can do that by clicking on the Add Find Customers and Vehicles button at the bottom of the page here. So once we do that, it takes us to a new page where we can create a new customer profile as well as add one or multiple vehicles to their profile. So we'll start with putting in the customer's phone number and email address, as well as first and last name. Then we'll click create new customer. And that's it. That's how easy it is to create a new customer. The next step is to add a vehicle to their profile. So we will put the year, make, model, and trim of the vehicle in the respective fields. Then select the configuration, and that's it. As you can see, the vehicle is attached to the profile, and the vehicle's specs are automatically populated. To add another vehicle to this profile, you can click the New Vehicle button and repeat the process. As you can also see here, you can add the vehicle to the profile via a license plate or a VIN. Or if you are using your smartphone to check in a vehicle at your shop, you could also take a picture of the license plate and it will decode that image and populate all the vehicle's information automatically. Pretty cool, right? But please note, this primarily works only for the US market. All right, so once we finished creating a new customer, let's go ahead and create a new repair order for this vehicle owner. We do that by clicking on the add repair text at the bottom of the page. This opens up a blank repair order. So the first thing that you'll likely want to do in this repair order is conduct a vehicle inspection. We have inspection checklists available which you can create yourself in configuration as well as OBD2 diagnostics, which work on a tablet or cell application with the appropriate Bluetooth devices. But let's go ahead and go through a checklist together. We first select Diagnostics from the Line Item drop-down menu and click Select. From the pop-up list, we will select the digital checklist we want and add it to the repair order. So, we added the inspection to the repair order but now we need to actually go through and complete it. We do that by clicking on the red icon and then opening up the inspection report. Here, we go through the inspection and mark each item as either green, yellow, or red. Once we're done here, we'll click back to return to the repair order. So we checked in the vehicle and conducted the inspection. Now it's time to actually write up the repair order. We'll first add a labor item type. We do that by selecting labor from the line item type drop-down list and typing in a few keywords in the text field. The system returns a few results and as you can see the first one, after maintenance, is the labor we're looking for. So let's click on that and add it to our repair. Let's also add a part as well. 
We'll select the part line item type from the drop down list and type in the description of the part. The system searches your local inventory as well as suppliers you set up and connected to in configuration. After you find the right part, you can add it to the repair by clicking on select. It will then be added to the repair order. We can also add a repair template or canned job to this repair order by utilizing the text field in the upper right corner. We start typing in a few letters and select the repair template we want to use from the drop down list. This populates the repair order with some line items we set up in configuration. It should be noted that the prices and labor time estimates that are used in these repair templates are merely placeholders, and if you want to get accurate labor times you need to look them up by clicking on the red icon and then clicking on the estimate labor from standard labor catalog button and selecting the labor time the exact same way we did previously. So let's say that we finished writing up the repair order. Next, we'll click on the approval step in the workflow ribbon underneath the repair order total. During this stage, we need to gain approval from the customer to start the repair process. So we click on the message icon and select the channel via which we'd like to send the digital invoice or quote to the vehicle owner for their approval. Once we do that, a message will be sent to the customer with a link to the digital quote. The customer can go and approve or decline each suggested repair line by line, or just hit approve all. Once that's done, a pop-up message will appear in your Auto Repair Cloud application, and you should see a notification of the customer's action. After returning to the repair order, we can see all the approved items, and now we may begin working on them. The next few stages of the repair process, such as get parts, wait for technician, and labor, are pretty self-explanatory. Once the repair process is complete, you can click on Finished and take the payment from the customer. We offer integrations with PayPal Card Reader and Clover and Square Systems. After that's done, we can print an invoice for the customer's records. By clicking on Invoice at the bottom of the Repair Order page and selecting Open Invoice, which opens up an invoice in a PDF document in a separate window, we print the invoice as we would any other PDF document. There's some other capabilities the repair order functionality can do, but we think what we showed thus far should give you a fundamental understanding of how it works and how easy it is to use. The next thing you probably want to learn about is what kind of technical service information is offered in Auto Repair Cloud. You can navigate to the technical information section from the main menu, and here, you will input the vehicle year, make, model, and trim information, and then select the type of technical information you are looking for. We have everything from wiring diagrams to repair procedures, OBD2 trouble codes, technical service bulletins, repair specs, fluids, component locations, and much more. We have third-party information as well as OEM information available, depending on the plan you have. Using this functionality is very simple. You may look up information by clicking on the type you'd like to view or searching for information with a keyword in the repair manual section. Going back to the dashboard, we can check out the repair workflow section. This is particularly useful for managers or shop owners of medium to large shops as it allows them to get a top-down view of the operations in their shop and how smoothly everything is running. As you can probably already guess, this is why indicating what step of the repair process we were currently on in the workflow ribbon in the repair order page is so important. It reflects the efficiency of the repair process to the manager or shop owner. As the shop owner or manager, you can set the amount of time that each repair step should take. If the technician completes the repair step in the allotted time, the workflow line is reflected as the color green. If the technician goes over the allotted time, the workflow line turns red, which means that attention should be paid to that particular repair. What about sending estimates in case someone calls into the shop and is asking for quotes? This is as easy to do as creating a new repair order. The process is actually very similar. We simply look up the customer in our customer list, open up their profile, 
and click on the Add Quote button at the bottom of the customer profile page. But what if the prospect who called in your shop hasn't been to your location before? In this case, you need to do an anonymous quote for their prospective customer. You can do that by navigating to the Quotes and Repair Orders page and clicking on Quotes on the ribbon at the top of the page. Then you can click on the New Quote icon, enter the vehicle's information, and click Add. You will then be taken to the Quotes page which as you can see, looks very similar to the RO page and functions very similarly as well. You can add parts and labor and give the customer both monetary and time estimates. You can also convert this quote to a repair order by clicking on Repair Order in the ribbon below the line items. It's important to note, however, that you will first need to attach a customer to the vehicle before you can convert the quote to a repair order. The next thing we'll take a look at is the appointments functionality. The appointment feature allows you to schedule appointments between technicians and vehicle owners. So a technician or a manager can schedule appointments with a customer on the shop's Auto Repair Cloud application side, which the customer will see in their Auto Repair Cloud application for vehicle owners. The customer can also schedule appointments from their end as well as long as they have the Auto Repair Cloud application for vehicle owners. This cuts out the need for customers to call the shop to set up an appointment to bring in their vehicle. The Scheduler app is fairly intuitive and easy to use. You can toggle between weeks and days as well as by bays and technicians. Click on the time slot, fill out the necessary information and click Save to schedule an appointment. Let's take a look at the parts section next. If we click on Auto Parts and Inventory, we can set up the vendors we work with by navigating to the Part Suppliers section and setting up a connection with a part vendor via either one of our direct or indirect integrations. We can also manage our inventory by clicking on Inventory and then searching for and clicking on a particular part. If we want to add parts manually to our inventory as opposed to ordering on Auto Repair Cloud via one of our integrations, we could do so by clicking on the New Inventory button at the bottom of the Inventory List page and then filling in the required information of the part and then clicking Add. After the system takes you to the particular inventory page, we will need to click on Select Another Option under the green button on the top right-hand corner and select New Income, No Order from the drop-down list. Once we do that, we fill in the required information and click Save. As you can see, this adds new inventory of this type to Auto Repair Cloud. Auto Repair Cloud offers a few different accounting software integrations. QuickBooks for Desktop, QuickBooks Online, Sage, and Zero. You can set up these integrations by going to the Data and Analytics section and then clicking on Accounting on the left-hand side menu, and following the prompts to connect your account to Auto Repair Cloud. While we're here in Data and Analytics, you could also see that you can generate different types of common reports as well as create custom reports. You may also export and import data easily, especially if you are coming over from a different popular shop management system. Finally, let's touch briefly on configuration. After we navigate there from the main menu, we can set up our company profile, manage our users, as well as set their permissions and access rights. We can set customization for our invoices and our different applications. If we go to Business Flow and then click on Invoice Printing, we can click on the invoice template that we like the most to select that to be our default invoice. 
We can then navigate to the financial section and click on special rates. To set up our hourly rates, we charge for diagnostic work and general repair or service work. As you can see, we could also set up discounted rates for any group below the default labor rates. We also have a parts markup calculator or parts price matrix, as well as parts discounts for groups. But it should be noted this only applies to parts ordered via Auto Repair Cloud. Clicking on currency and taxes takes us to the page where we can set the currency to our local one and set tax rates for both labor and parts. Clicking on templates on that left hand side menu takes us to the section where we can create as many templates as we need for digital vehicle inspections and for repairs, i.e. canned jobs. In this case, the shop does the same jobs over and over again. As noted previously on the repair templates, only return placeholder estimates when added to the repair order, so the shop needs to add the actual labor times for accurate estimating via the standard labor catalog. In this section we can also see message templates, which means we can create our own customer canned messages here. These messages still possess that personal touch because you can utilize dynamic variables, which are essentially placeholders, that will automatically populate with the specific customer's or shop's information, such as the customer name or vehicle, repair status, amount due, technician's name, etc. We'll end the video here. Again, we didn't go over everything, as this software offers so much functionality that it's hard to cover everything all in one video. But again, we hope that what we presented for you today will help you understand what this software is capable of and how to use it.